This week on the corner, I'm going to look at my Prusa MK3 with the multi-material upgrade. And I'm going to see if I can solve what most people have is the thick and stringy tips. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's me, Jeff. This is my corner. I am working on my Prusa MK3S. I don't even have a video out on this printer because these things are workhorses, to be honest with you. Um, I very rarely tinker with it. I just basically do basic maintenance to it because out of the box, put, built and assembled properly, these things last and last and last. I've had this printer for, I think, three years. Um, and honestly, it's... Um, Aside from, you know, the thermostat, maybe uh, a fan replacement, and that's really about it. That's probably all I've had to do with this over the course of the years I've had it. But now um, what I'm going to do is trying to fix my MMU um, too. I've had um, issues with it. Like it prints fantastic. It really does. Once it's dialed in and stuff, it actually does... Uh, amazing work here. I'm talking about this car here. So this is a print by the MMU and you know it does what it's supposed to do. It swaps filaments, it changes. This is one of my favorite prints actually. Let me show you this from the MMU. It's a teeny tiny little Emil but that goes to show you um, how detailed this can be up to what else we got over here? Let's see here. We got the baby Yoda. Oh, uh, can you see here? Let's see if I can find Remy here. Uh, even up to like this size, which is just awesome, right? So when the MMU is working, it works great. But the problem with the MMU sometimes is um, you end up getting bulbous tips some stringing and stuff like that. Now the stringing you can usually take care of in the settings, but those tips, those thick tips are a problem that a lot of people have. Now, over here, I've already started, I disassembled the hot end component of the MK3S. Um, and this is the heat break. Now, standard heat breaks, now I might have this wrong and I'll have to check the numbers and stuff, but I believe the E3D heat breaks, the channel through them is like a 2.2 millimeter going through. Now for some information, uh, the standard E3D V6 uh, heat break is um, two millimeter internal diameter full length. The Prusa has a step down from 2.2 to 2 millimeters at the bottom of the melt transition zone. As your filament, as your printing and your filament goes in to the hot end, it oozes out, and then what it has to do is it has to change filaments, so it comes out. So what it does with the settings is it will actually retract a little, ram a little, retract a little, ram a little, retract a little, ram a little. So that it forms a tip in the uh, the cooling zone of the heat break, okay? And then it will retract all the way through your PTFE tube. And it will go up to the top. It will then change filaments. And it will push the filaments all the way down back into your hot end. Now, as I say, some people, myself included, have had a challenge where you got this big bulbless end on here. So it will get jammed or it won't trigger properly. Tips, what I've done is I've actually purchased these bi-metal heat breaks. Um, now, as I say, I saw somebody in the forum playing around with this. I don't know if those have, um, if he's gotten those yet or if he just ordered them. I got a quick deal on them, so I will, um, attempt to put these bad boys in, or a bad boy in. Um, love these little packages. There's like seven of them, right? <laughs> it's always like, we're going to, you know, wrap this and wrap this and wrap this. Oh, yeah. So, 
I do have to um, say though is so I've got this package basically with the two things came in a box this big <laughs> with a whole bunch of paper in it so yeah so but so the key point here is that I will take a photo of this but you will notice that the inner diameter is a little bit smaller it's a 1.9 instead of a, a 2 or even a 2.2 for the regular ones so we're going to give this a shot and see what our tips look like so uh, i guess i'll show you how my prusa mk3s is set up for the multi-material upgrade i have some heat sinks around my extruder motor um, I found those keep the uh, temperature cool. Sometimes this motor gets hot and I've heard online that if it gets too hot, um, it will heat up the, um, the gears that pull it and, you know, you just might have problems with that. Um, so I have that on there. I don't know if it's counterproductive or not, but it keeps the extruder motor cool. So it's kind of a win-win. Uh, when I did rebuild the hot end and put the new heat break in, I actually left the PTF tube in there because it was a bit worn and I thought that would be a good test instead of replacing it with a brand new one and having skewed results. Um, up here, I did replace the selector with a larger bore selector. Um, that's the only modification I've done to it. And I have overhang spool, overhang, underhanging spool holders, I guess you would call them. I'll leave the link down below. Um, and I'm not using a buffer at all. I'm just letting them go au naturel, shall we say. Okay, test one. A little fuzzy on the back of this guy here. But the tips are where I want them. So I'd say this is... A success but more work to be done but no interventions and this was the um, the print directly off of the Prusa site and those are the tips I did drop the temperature down to 195 as opposed to 205 but that's it all right so three hours 31 minutes um, thinking I remember it's about 70 changes I got a three colored lizard here. And let's check out these tips here. Um, I don't know if I can do this with one hand or not. Okay. You know what? Here, let me just um, pop this bad boy off. Alright, let's have a look here. Uh, tip number one. Pretty good. Tip number two. Oops. I'm going to smack my MMU down here. I know, really crazy camera angles, but it's the best I can do right now. Let's see here. Tip number two. Let's see here. Again, not too bad at all. Sorry, trying to get you a good view here. Tip number three. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Uh -huh. Oh, a little stringing on this one. But this is an older filament. There's, I'm trying to look here. It's actually just wispy. It's not even a lot. And let's have a look in here. There's nothing here. So I just wanted to show you guys actually um, what I got for filaments here. I've got uh, Tennis Purple, Soltec 3D Solutions Black, Amazed, um, the Chocolate Brown. What's the white? Uh, the white's like a generic no-name brand, I think. Um, 
And then this is CCC tree here for another brown. So I'm using mixed filaments here and the tips are looking pretty good. And the product's looking pretty good. And here, I think I had one intervention on this, but it wasn't the filament. It actually um, shot out the side here. So I had to um, come back and adjust that. But um, yeah. All right. So four filament print. Uh, I'll have to get you the exact changes. Uh, I think it's probably around 400. But let's go to... Fail stats, MMU, last print, zero. There's Mr. Chewbacca. Now you'll notice that his bandolier is purple. I tried to do him with this nice little brown color here, but this filament was just horrible. It was stringing to no end and causing all sorts of issues. So I just want to be clear that Sometimes you just have a filament and that's not the MMU's fault. But let's look at these tips. The white. I'm trying to focus here. Um, the brown. The black. And the purple. Those tips are awesome. They really are. So yeah, so this all metal heat or this um, bi metal heat break is, seems to do a really good job here. All right. Oh, I also use the um, the sparse layering too with this, so you'll see my purge block is about half the height of Mr. Chewbacca here. So yeah, um, it looks like there was a layer skip in here, but this is pointed printed at 0.3 millimeters. Um, about 500 tool changes. I think it was 30% of the original model. Um, and my tips. Now, truth be told, I was having problems with this brown. She just does not want to cooperate too much. But all in all, the tips are still fantastic. I had a couple interventions only on the brown. Hey everyone, so we're done with the testing now. And again, this was a really, really quick test and a really quick sample size. I did four models. I did them smaller scale. I just wanted to get some tool changes in and get a feel for it. Um, so let's just recap here real quick. I have... Um, uh, let's see here. From smallest to highest, I think the lizard was um, 78 changes. The sheep was 95. Uh, Chewbacca was 214. And the cube was 421. Now, out of all of this, I had one incident. I think it was the sheep that the filament came through the selector of the MMU, didn't make it through, it came up sideways. So I had a problem with that. Okay, so Chewbacca didn't go clean, as I showed you. I had a different colored filament in there. I hadn't dried it, I hadn't calibrated it. So I was having problems with that until I actually switched out that filament. I had no ends of problems. And then as soon as I switched out that single filament, Chewbacca ran great. Um, the cube, I had a couple of interventions in, um, and I couldn't figure out why. Um, it looked good on all the loads and the unloads and everything. There was no halting or holding or anything like that. The tips looked fine, so I don't know. So basically, after 800 changes, I had two filament loading issues and then I had one where the filament went sideways so I had about three issues but um, I'm going to show you the tips real quick here um, now I'll take a close-up too so you can actually see these but um, the tips are fantastic they came out really well um, so is this the holy grail of multi-material printing no might this help you get clean tips I think so. Um, this might eliminate 
one part of your, your challenges using the MMU. You need to make sure your filaments are calibrated properly and dried. Your pathways are clean, perfectly tuned. Filament sensor, oh, so one thing with the Chewbacca was that I had an issue where because of the stringing, it actually, a little ball of the string got into the, where the gears mesh. So it kept load, unload, load, unload, load, unload. I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. I actually had to spin the inside gear and I saw that little ball of wisps of stringing that would actually make the um, the IR sensor trigger every time it went around. So it was kind of going like this before the filament even went down. Bad filaments can cause issues with your MMU. Myself, I use whatever I can get the cheapest. <laughs> That's just me. I don't, I'm not premium filament person whatsoever. I see a deal on Amazon, I'll buy a roll or two or different colors or whatever. So I don't have a specific brand I use. I use multi-brand. I'm like the uh, Walmart of filaments. Okay. <laughs> I am like lowest price guaranteed. I'm going for it. The prints all came out the way they're supposed to. I had very little, I had very no, no interventions in a lot of them and one print for some reason i had a few but i have a feeling that's probably my fault so what i have is i have the free hanging filaments that are just naturally feeding into the mmu from the top and then it's going down um ir calibration is a is a really good thing make sure all your gears are clean going in you need to be spot on with your ir calibration but yeah the uh the bi metal heat break I think they did a good job. Um, it's forming the tips really nicely. It looks really good. Like I, I never had tips this good before, to be honest with you. They're a little bit smaller, um, I would think. I don't see any big swelling on them. I can actually measure them. Do I have calipers here? Yeah, I do have calipers here. Let's have a look here. Um, the weight is 1.9. The green is eh, 1.91, sorry. Get the green here. What's the lightest print of the green? 1 1.91, 1 1.91, 1 1.97, no 1.94. So it's keeping the tips nice and tight, which is good. Um, I'd say it's worth a shot, right? If you're having problems with your tips on your MMU and you can't figure out how to not get them bulbous or bulky, um, give this a try. Um, if you like this video, thank you so much. If you're cruising through the channel, hit subscribe. Um, it's you guys that make me want to do these videos, basically. So thank you so much. Um, leave me a comment and peace out.